Hi guys, welcome to the next lecture. Till now, we have been thoroughly working on the concept of limits. Now, in calculus, we will move further and talk about the concept of continuity. What do you mean by continuity? See, intuitively, the word continuity means no break at all. Continuity. So, when you pick up your pen or pencil, you start scribbling and you never stop. No matter what shape you are generating, but you never stop. There is no break, no gap, no hole. That is what intuitively continuity means. So it's a graphical concept per se. When the graph of the function has no break and no holes, then that means it's a continuous graph or it's a continuous function. To understand this further, let me give you some visual uh, graphs so that you can figure out continuity. Look at the first graph carefully. This is the graph of y equals to fx. And this point where some change is occurring is say point C. This is graph number B. And again, this is a graph of y equals to say fx. And this is point C where some change is occurring. So let's observe what has just happened here in terms of whatever we know. So we know about limits till now, right? If you see this graph where I have shown a gap here, okay, in this circle, that means that the value of the function does not exist at C or the function is not defined at C. So point that you must note here is in graph A, function is undefined at C. Well, in graph number B, the function is defined at C. Can you see I have this dot here that means at C it's picking up this value and then going like this. So what's happening? The value of the function at C exists. So it, it's well defined at C. but can you see the limit of the function from left side is, is absolutely different from the limit of the function, what it is from the right side. That means even when uh, the value of the function exists at C, the function uh, limit is not defined. So, or the limit does not exist for this function. The limit does not exist. at C. Clearly, your uh, the, the limits on either sides are different. Now, notice in the next graph, this is the graph of y equals to fx again on both the sides. And this is, say, point C. And at C, I have defined the functional value. You can see there's a dot here. That means at C, Fc is this. But around C, what's happening? Around C, the function is going to infinity. It's just moving up, up, up vertically. Can you see that? So what is our observation here? The value of the function is well defined at C, but again, the limit as it extends to C, fx, since it's infinity on either side, it does not exist. I hope you remember D and E. I write it down for does not exist, right? So the limit again does not exist. Let's observe what's happening in D. So graph D, again, this is the graph of y equals to fx. This is point C. And at point C, what I can see clearly here is that the value of the function is there. But it's different from the limit. And does the limit exist? Ask yourself, does the limit exist? Clearly it does, because from the left and right, it seems to be the same thing. But it's different from the value of the function at C. The value of the function is different from the limit. Limit extends to C if X exists. But it is not equal to F of C. 
which also exists. F of C also exists, but value of the function is different from uh, the limit of this function at C. Now, what do you think is happening in these graphs in terms of continuity? Are these graphs, are these graphs continuous? Clearly not. I can see a hole here. I can see a gap here. I can see an, a complete break here. So, of course, when I, I, I was drawing it, that means I had to stop somewhere and then probably start again at a later point. Here, what's happening, the function is going, going on and on and on. But there, there is clearly a gap here. You know, at C, the value of the function is absolutely different. And on the either side, it's actually moving to infinity. So clearly, these two curves had to be made separately. There wasn't any continuity in graphing it. Okay. Same thing happened here just because I can see that there is a hole here. Though we were moving exactly in the same direction, uh, the graph was turning out to be absolute smooth graphing, but there had to be a hole here because C at C, the value of the function was different from the limit. Okay. So with this notion, with this background, we can formally define continuity. That means all these scenarios must not happen for a function to be continuous. So what should happen for a function to be called continuous? Let's define that. A function f is said to be continuous at a particular point c, provided the following conditions are satisfied. Now, what are these following conditions? The first thing, function must be defined at this point to avoid that gap hole. Uh, fc, since we're talking about at c, so fc is defined that is the first and foremost thing, okay? It should not be undefined. It should be defined. Number two, limit as it extends to C, Fc or Fx, sorry, exists. The moment I say limit exists, that means it has to be a finite number, right? So limit as it extends to C, Fx must exist because if that wouldn't happen, you will have a gap, right? The last thing that must happen in order for this graph to be continuous is that this limit as it extends to C fx, it should be same as the functional value. Otherwise, D would happen. Graph D would happen. See, the limit exists and the limit is there. So that automatically means left hand is equal to right hand limit. But it's different from the value of the function at C. And that is why we had a gap in that graph, right? That, that hole in that graph. So all the four scenarios that I gave you would not occur in case these three things are happening. Fc is defined. The limit at C exists for this function. And the limit is same as the value of the function. This is what you require for continuity. With this analysis and this definition of continuity, surely we understand that these four graphs that I showed to you, A, B, C, and D, all four of them are actually depicting discontinuity of some type. Discontinuity would definitely mean that it's not continuous, right? So, but can you see the variety of things happening here. In A, something different is happening. In B, something different is happening. In C, some other scenario is there. In D, there is a different scenario, right? So we can define discontinuity and we can define discontinuity of different types. So what do we mean by discontinuity? The moment, if one or more than one, if one or more conditions that I have put up in this definition for continuity fails to hold, then the scenario would be of discontinuity. If one or more of the conditions of this definition fails to hold, then the function will be discontinuous at x equals to c. At c, we are talking about point continuity, continuity at a particular point, right? Now, there are different kind of discontinuities that you can observe in these four graphs. What are they? 
there's something called jump discontinuity. The word itself tells you what it would mean. It would mean that there is a jump. Where can you see this jump? B. The graph that you see it in B, uh, this graph is definitely coming with a jump. And that's what is called a jump discontinuity. B is an example of that. Recall the point that we observed there. What was happening? What was special about this graph? The limit itself at C does not exist here, right? So whenever you have a jump discontinuity, what's going to happen there? Essentially, the limit itself would not exist. And that's why you will have a jump. Your left-hand side limit would be different from the right-hand side limit. So please write down for jump discontinuity, the limit as x tends to c, fx does not exist. In other words, what's happening here is that the left-hand limit at c would be different from the right-hand limit of c leading to this jump. Okay? There is another kind of discontinuity which you saw in the third graph, graph C. That is infinite discontinuity. What was happening there? We saw that the uh, you know limit, of course, does not exist because limit was going to infinity, right? So then we don't say that the limit exists. But yes, the functional value was there at C, but it was different, different from the limit, right? So of course, the limit and uh, the limit does not exist and the functional value is different. So what's happening here is we call it infinite discontinuity. And what's happening here is like in example C, one-sided limits as X approaches C are infinite. And that is what is an infinite discontinuity. Then what you saw in example D, that scenario is the scenario where we can remove the discontinuity. Let me take you back to that graph. What's happening here? The value of the function is different from what the limit is, but the limit does exist, right? The limit does exist and that is why we just have this hole here. Otherwise, the graph is going very, you know, in the same direction. It is not like jumping or going infinite. No, it's just moving very smoothly. Just that at uh, C, the value of the function is different. And that's why we have to have that hole there. The moment you remove it, it becomes a continuous function. So that is why we call it removable discontinuity. So what's happening in removable discontinuity? The limit as x tends to c, exists. It's just that it is not equal to f of c. The moment we could make it equal to f of c, it will become a continuous function, a continuous graph. And that's why we call it removable discontinuity. The others are irremovable discontinuities because you cannot really get away with discontinuity in those graphs. But this one, D, is a case of removable discontinuity. To understand all this better, let's take a function and work at it. So let's take the example. Uh, fx is equal to x square minus 4 upon x minus 2. gx is equal to x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 when x is not equal to 2 and it's 3 when x is equal to 2. hx is x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 when x is not equal to 2 and it is 4 when x is equal to 2. So they're related, right? But let's uh, express what in, in terms of graph these three situations would mean. Are they different from each other? Well, uh, whether it is f, whether it is g or h, if we are interested in figuring out the limit as x tends to 2, and we would be interested in figuring out the limit as x tends to 2. Why? Because at 2, some change is happening. Actually, the domain of this function would be defined as all real numbers minus 2 because at 2, the denominator becomes 0. And since the denominator becomes 0, it feels like the functional value should be infinity, right? But if we define it in different, different manners, like I have in terms of G and H, what difference will it make? 
So coming back to finding limits, we have worked, uh, you know, on, on these kind of questions, you can find out limit. So the limit as x tends to 2 of x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 is equal to, you can use some algebra out here. And what you can do, a square minus b square. So x square minus 4 would mean x plus 2 into x minus 2 upon x minus 2. So x minus 2, x minus 2 cancels and you get x plus 2. So this limit is same as saying limit x tends to 2 of x plus 2, which will turn out to be 4, right? Graphically, what will this scenario mean? This scenario would mean that I cannot define in, in f, I cannot define the functional value at 2. The domain of this function becomes r minus 2 and I cannot define at 2 what fx is, right? So graphically, it would look like the following. So the graph of y equals to fx would look something of this sort. Wherein, if you observe, what's going to happen is at 2, the function is not defined. So we don't know what it would be at 2. But we know that whether we observe from the left of 2 or we observe from the right of 2, the limit would turn out to be 4. The well, if gx is equal to x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 when x is not equal to 2 and 3 when x is equal to 2, that means we have a function which is well defined at 2. But what does it mean to us graphically? Graphically, even right now, the limit as x goes to 2 of this function x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 will be equal to 4. So the graph would go something like this. And what's going to happen is that I will still have to give it a break here at 2 because the value of the function is actually, they're saying it's 3. So the value of the function is different. So y equals to fx graph would go like this. Here you have say 4. Here you have say 3 and here you have say 2. So it's cutting like this and at 2 the value of the function is 3. So which is different from uh, you know it's not lying on the path of this line uh, straight line this graph. So hence I will have to give that hole there. And now let's look at hx. Now what is happening is if I create the same graph see the limit is same so the graph will look like exactly the same thing. So when x is not equal to 2, I can say that the function looks like x plus 2. So as x tends to 2, x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 will give you the limit 4. So when x is 0, y is 2 and it's going to be like this. Say this is x equal to 2 and this is say 4. The graph goes like this as far as the limits are concerned but then wow what we just got to know is that the value of the function is also 4. This is equal to the value of the function at 2 that means graphically speaking there I don't have to create that hole here the line goes like this straight. So what has just happened this graph has become a continuous graph the moment X at x equal to 2, the value of the function was given as 4, which is same as the limit of this uh, function at 2. And that's what the entire thing about continuity is. So this was removable discontinuity. In case I would have just taken x square minus 4 upon x minus 2, there was a discontinuity. But since we were given that x is equal to, at x is equal to 2, Two fx your, your function gives you 4 that removed that discontinuity so the con function became continuous so as a function if you were given x square minus 4 upon x minus 2 since the limit of this function exists this is a case of this is a classic case of removable discontinuity because that discontinuity could be removed okay so this is what I wanted to discuss in today's lecture. Thank you.